Hi, Blood Talk fans. Today is the third part of urine analysis, microscopy, but it is the fourth video about urine analysis. Don't be too confused. We're just gonna go with microscopic examination today. In the microscopic examinations, we will be looking at the urine sediment for white blood cells, red blood cells, bacteria, crystal, and cast. This used together with the urine physical and chemical analysis. Without further ado, let us get into it. After examining physical and chemical analysis of the urine, it is time for microscopy examination. For me, this is the most exciting part of urine analysis. Maybe I'm biased because I love microscopy. If you also love microscopy work, please let me know. Just type I love microscopy or just microscopy. Specimen condition. Before the start of microscopic examinations, take a note of the specimen's age and storage condition into consideration. For instance, if the specimen has been left at room temperature for 4 hours and you see abundance of bacteria, does that suggest that the patient may have UTI or is that due to bacteria growth after the fact? Well, if you start the urine in refrigerator, that would help fix the problem, right? What do you think? Well, let's see. Refrigerating the urine sample is one way to preserve urine that is waiting for examinations and for transportation. If refrigerated the urine give us the benefits of limiting the bacteria growth, then what is the problem? The problem is that once the urine is refrigerated, crystals can form due to change in temperature. Now, if we see the crystal in urine, what should we do? Does that mean you should never report crystals seen in the urine samples that has been refrigerated? No, it doesn't. Because there are ways that we can treat the sample and give the most accurate test results. Given the specimens and the specimen condition we have, we will go through a few of those techniques as we go along as well. Preparations of urine for microscopy. First, mix the urine gently. Do not shake because you don't want to create bubbles or if the container is not closed tightly, you may end up having some of the urine on yourself. The reason that you want to mix the urine gently before microscopy examination is if you leave the urine sitting for a while, red blood cells and white blood cells can settle to the bottoms and you may miss those. Second, label and then pour out about 10 ml of well-mixed urine sample into urine analysis centrifuge tube. Third, centrifuge the urine sample for about 5 to 10 minutes at 200 rpm. Fourth, gently pour out supplement. Be careful not to disturb the pellet. Only leave about 1 ml to suspend the pellet with. Fifth, make sure you suspend the pellet and mix well before sampling the urine for examination. Sixth, drop a drop of urine onto a microscope slide and place a cover slip on top. Try to avoid bubble because that could affect how well the urine sediment distributes. Microscope. First, examine the specimen in the bright field microscope. Do not start by staining the urine. If you need to stain the urine for further examinations, that process should be done after a bright field microscopic examinations, so you don't miss other findings. Second, adjust the brightness. Not too bright and not too dark. If the microscope is too bright, you may miss some structure like Helen cats. The best way I can describe it is to adjust to where you can see the age of the cells and other casts clearly. You may need to adjust this a few times in the beginning to find the best lighting for yourself. But once you are getting used to it, this step won't take more than a few seconds. You can either adjust the brightness at the diaphragms or some newer microscope models has a dimmer switch. Third, most laboratories have microscope assigned for the urine bench already, so you won't have to do much of adjustment. Use a fine adjustment knob to help you focus. During the examination, you would want to keep adjusting the fine adjustment knob constantly to look at the objects and structure that are on the different focal plane. Fourth, 
review the sediments at low power magnifications, scan the slide for cast, crystal, and other elements. Switch to a higher power when necessary to tell the type of the cast or want a better look at the object. Reporting results. This is a tricky one because each facility may impose different rules on how they want their results to be reported. Also, different types of objects also report differently. Here are some examples. First, casts are reported as the average number of casts seen at low power magnifications in 10 to 15 fields. The casts can be reported in number or reported as rare to many. Second, the cells like red blood cells and white blood cells should be viewed and report in a higher magnifications and reported in range 0 to 2, 2 to 5, and so on. For the rest of the things that we can find in the settlements, I will mention as we go along. What are the possible treasures that you can find? As much as I would like to mention every single possible structure you may see in urine settlements, I cannot. I will group them into cells, bacteria, crystals, casts, parasites, miscellaneous, and other facts. Let's start with cells. Red blood cells. Red blood cells in urine can come from any part of the urinary tract. It can also come from menstrual blood in female patients. Since it doesn't look red under the bright field microscope, but you still can tell that it is red blood cells. The red blood cells does not have nuclei, appear as pale or yellowish, and smooth biconcave disc approximately 7 microns in diameter and 2 micron thick. From the side wheel, you may see red blood cells as hourglass cheap. What about lice red blood cells? You still can see lice red blood cells. They are referred to as ghost cells. They are fainted colorless circle because you are looking at red blood cells membranes with nothing inside. Red blood cell lies in hypotonic urine and crinine in hypertonic urine. Hematuria is the presence of an increased number of red blood cells in the urine. There are a number of reasons for the increased number of red blood cells such as UTI, renal stone, sickle cell anemia, or just heavy exercise. It is normal to see 1-2 to two red blood cells per high power few. To report red blood cells observations, Red blood cells are quantified as numbers of cells in high power field. White blood cells White blood cells are the same as red blood cells in the sense that it can enter the urinary tract anywhere. On average, a normal urine contains about 2 white blood cells per high power field. White blood cells are larger than red blood cells, usually spherical and appear dull gray or green yellowish under microscope. White blood cells shrink in hypertonic urine and lies in hypotonic urine, which is the opposite of red blood cells. An increase of white blood cells in urine associated with inflammatory, UTI, contamination with vagina secretions, dehydration, stress, and more. Epithelial cells If you can differentiate the types of epithelial cells, you can narrow down where the problem is. The three main types of epithelial cells in urine samples are renal tubule, transitional, and squamous. Renal tubular epithelial cells. Renal tubular epithelial cells are slightly larger than leukocyte and contain a large round nucleus. Increased number of tubular epithelial cells suggest tubular damage. The damage can be caused from acute tubular necrosis or form a kidney transplant rejection. Traditional epithelial cells look similar to pear sheep. These cells may contain two nuclei. This type of cell lie the urinary tract from kidney to upper portions of urethra. Squamous epithelial cells. This type of epithelial cells is easily recognized because it is large and in regular shape. This type of cells is in the urethra and vagina. Bacteria The presence of bacteria is a common finding in urine. However, 
the increased amounts are consistent with UTI. Nonetheless, the presence of bacteria alone cannot determine that the patient has UTI. The presence of bacteria with negative leukocyte esterate and a negative nitrate suggests that the high number of bacteria is due to poor collection technique. Crystals Crystals are usually not found in fresh urine. The formations of crystals is depend on concentrations of ions and molecules and pH. In some cases, the crystal can form in the kidney and urinary tract and results in stones. Many of the crystals are non-pathologic and insignificant except in case like metabolic disorders and medications regulations. Each crystal has unique properties and can be identified by either their appearance, pH, and solubility. Let's start with the crystals that can be found in acidic urine. Amorphous urea Amorphous urea are yellow to red-brown granular in appearance. This type of crystal does not have known clinical significance. Uric acid this type of crystal comes in different shapes, but the most common shape is diamond and the rosette. It associates with tumor lysis syndrome. Calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate has a unique shape. They look like envelope. They're soluble in hydrochloride acid, but insoluble in acidic acid. And that's how we can verify if this crystal is calcium oxalate by adding different acid into the urine and see if the crystal is dissolved. Calcium oxalate is normal especially after consumption of certain foods like tomatoes, spinach, garlic, orange, asparagus, and a large dose of vitamin C. An increased number of calcium oxalate crystals can be pathologic conditions like liver disease, diabetic mentalis, and severe chronic renal disease. There are more crystals that can be found in acidic urine and a few that worth mentioning. I will put them and the pictures in the next few slides. But just note that there are many more that I have not mentioned it here. There are many crystals that can be found in alkali urine as well. I will mention a few of them here. First, amorphous phosphate. These are granulated particles, have no defined shape, visually the same as amorphous urea, but the urine pH helps distinguish between the two of them. Calcium carbonate. The crystals are small, colorless, appearing in dumbbells shape. This crystal doesn't have clinical significance from what I know, giving that is not an excessive amount. Casts Urine casts are long cylinder structures, no dark edges formed in the lumens of the tubular of the kidney. Acidic and concentrated urines promote formations of casts. Casts have parallel sides and rounded or blooded ends. The shape and size are very. The casts can either be straight or curled and have different lengths. Helen cast. Helen cast is the most commonly found type of cast in a urine sample. A few Helen casts can be found in a normal urine. An increased amount of Helen cast can be found when exercise and if the patient is dehydrated. There are different types of casts like red blood cells, white blood cells, granular, epidural cells, wax, and fatty casts. Parasites Parasites may occasionally be found in urine. This can be the result of vagina or fecal contaminations as well. 
unlike bacteria, the presence of parasites cannot be confirmed with the chemical analysis of the urine, which is why microscopic examinations is the key for identifying parasites in urine specimen. Trichomonas Trichomonas is the most common parasite found in urine specimen. It has about the same size as a large white blood cell. If the parasite is dead, it can easily be mistaken as white blood cells. The parasites can be found in both male and female patients. If the patients have trichomonas, you will see an increased number of white blood cells and epithelial cells. The key features that you can tell the difference between the trichomonas and the white blood cell is the trichomonas have phagellus, and if the sample is fresh, you can see them moving. And here are a few other parasites that can also be found in urine. Now let's talk about artifacts and contaminations. Most common contamination that I personally seen when I was doing urine analysis are coat fiber and starch crystals. Coat fibers are the most common type. It comes from clothing, diaper, and lens paper. Fiber can be mistaken for cast, so you have to be very careful. But since the fibers are artificial, when you look in microscope, the edges are a lot sharper than cast. For starch crystals, the starch crystals are round or oval, highly refractive, and varies in size. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.